Last year, I set up a goal for me to read actually 60 books in a year. So in 2023, but I actually read 51 instead of 60, which is not, you know, it's still a lot of books, uh, but it's not really too much of a problem for me because I put up this number of 60 books out there just so I could read more. Uh, but I wasn't really going to put too much pressure on myself to actually read 60 books. I just wanted once again to have this number out there and try to actually read that many books. So out of the 51 books, there's only two books that I didn't like. One that I truly hated. And the second one is just a book that I didn't really connected with. So the first book, the one that I just truly hated was the demonologist you know where we're following the warrens so ed and lauren warren it's just one dimensional you know it's there's no depth to it everything is the devil all the time always there's no questions asked and if you're asking if it's really the devil you know doing devil stuff or whatever you're an idiot in their mind so it's I didn't connect it with anything in this book uh, this is the second book that I've read by the Warrens and I just yeah the only two books that I truly hated you know since I started this channel and both of them were Warren books I might read try again to read a Warren book but I don't know yeah I might just not Put myself through this once again and the second book so this one is just my least favorite I didn't really hate it that book it's just that I've not really connected with it was Le Fantôme de l'Opéra by Gaston Leroux and it's mainly because it was just a bit boring in my mind so yeah I read this book in French because French is my natural language and it's just yeah I didn't connected with that story at all unfortunately the first half of the book was really good but it all fell short in the second half when we removed the mystery elements that we had in the first part then on with my favorite books of the year uh, it's not really a top six or whatever it's just you know these are the six books that I like best they're not in any order you know, as of right now, uh, I just want to keep the book of the year at the end of the video, actually. Uh, so let's start with the start of the year, essentially. Uh, the Dune series, I'm putting that as one book just because of... I couldn't say which one of the Dune series is my favorite. The Dune series as a whole is just so amazing. It's... I mean so deep it's so philosophical at times it's it has all these political views of, of the world and all these things it's really good if you've never read dune i would recommend reading it and watching the movies and then we have roadside picnic i really enjoyed this book i mean just the concept of it you know the aftermath of a visitation by aliens but not really a visitation it's just they had a picnic on earth and the stuff that they left behind is really toxic to us like and very dangerous and it's just waste essentially so it really it's hard on that insignificance of the human beings in the grand scheme of things. It has this almost cosmic horror elements to it. It's not horror by any means. It's just that it has this existential dread that cosmic horror has. I really enjoyed this book. It's one of my favorite of the year once again. Then we have Neuromancer. I've not... <laughs> understood everything in this book there's a lot of things that i don't didn't understand uh by the way i just ordered book two and three in the series because it's part of a series i don't remember what it's called on the top of my head but yeah it just goes to show that i really enjoyed this book i can't wait to come back to it maybe i'll understand it a bit better the second time around mainly because there's a lot of 
names, weird names, nomenclature that I'm not used to in sci-fi. And I can't wait to come back to Neuromancer and read the two books that I come afterwards. Then another book that I really enjoyed is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieliski. I've read the Fr French version uh, because I had the French book uh, lying around and I it's been on my list for so long and I'm so glad that I finally read it. This book did something to me like physically. While I was reading this book I was feeling kind of nauseated. Not, not really but it's hard to say like how I was feeling. I was feeling disoriented. That's more of the word that I was searching for. I was disoriented, you know, because you're moving the book around. And at one point I was like, where's the next page? Am I going backwards? Am I going forward? It's just, it's an experience, you know, House of Leaves is. You either like it or don't, but I really enjoyed it just because of how involved I was in reading you know it was a physical thing and not just a passive thing i was physically moving the book around and doing something with the story it's a very cool book it has a lot of really great concepts within the book you know of mental health addiction and uh, the relationship you know it's kind of the falling off of a relationship all these things mixed together in a very incredible book uh, with some horror elements to it. There are some really scary moments within this book. Then I really liked The Auctioneer by Joan Sampson. This is one of my favorite book, all-time favorite books. It's just, it's really interesting, you know, the, it's not that horror, it's more of a thriller not really a thriller either you have this ominous feeling that something bad is going to happen and at the end you know something not really bad but something does happen you know it just breaks and opens up to this huge climax in the end of the book it's a very well crafted book it's it's a short read but it's an intense read because there's a lot of stuff going on in such a short book actually and it's a really great book. And then uh, number six. So as I said, it's not in any order or whatever. Uh, but the next book that I really enjoyed this year was The Exorcist. So it's not a surprise. It's one of my favorite horror movie ever made. I think it's one of the best movie adaptation. It's just an incredible book. So well written, so well thought of. Uh, the horror comes mainly from the powerlessness that the mother is feeling. Uh, she's not able to help her daughter at all. And she's just feeling this powerless in the face of the unknown. And it's just a very powerful book. Very well crafted. Once again, very well written. And it's it goes hand in hand with the movie if you watched a movie and you liked it you should read the book same thing goes if you've only read the book never watched a movie it's one thing that you know you should do both because they had so much more to the other that's it for the negative and positives of the year so lastly what i wanted to do is just talk about my favorite book that i read this year so book of the year it could be all six of them to be honest because i liked each and every one of them almost equal uh, but if I had to pick I'd say it's The Auctioneer by Joan Sampson. It has a lot of stuff that's still relevant today. The rural community you know being merged into cities and yeah I really enjoyed that you know like how we're dispossessing farmers of their lands uh, in order to build more houses and you know the suburbs are getting larger and larger in America at least here in Canada uh, that's kind of something that I'm feeling you know coming I work for cities as a city planner and we have this problem right now that you know rural communities are getting more and more quote-unquote invaded by city uh, just because the suburbs are getting larger and larger as time goes on but it's 
a book, once again, that's really relevant today. It has all these aspects of society, you know, how we're evolving, you know, and how the cities are getting larger, essentially, and invading these rural communities more and more. So that's it for my 2023 review. It was a really big year for me. If you've made it this far in this video, I really thank you. I can't thank you enough for sticking around. And I'll see you in the next one.